In this video, I'm going to show you the one trading strategy that made me over six figures last year. Now, could I charge money for this information? I absolutely could. Did I think about charging money for this information? I absolutely did. But ultimately, I decided to just give away my strategy for free here on YouTube because I feel like we lack transparency and honesty in this industry. No, this is not some fancy strategy and it's really not that advanced, but it just works. If you know anything about me, you know that I trade the ICT turtle soup. Now that means that I sell the highs and I buy the lows, whether that would be external range liquidity or internal range liquidity, that doesn't really matter, right? But I'm not just buying any low and I'm not just selling any high. And that is exactly what I'm about to break down for you in this video. But we must always remember that the strategy is really not the important part of the trader. The important part is finding one strategy and using that strategy over and over again. Because again, realistically, any strategy can work once you've used it long enough. And there's nothing that beats market experience, meaning that you watch the charts go up and down for a certain period of time. Some of my best trades are simply just a gut feeling because I've seen it happen so many times. With that out of the way, Let's jump on the charts and let me show you a few examples of the strategy that I use and I have used for a very long period of time. So this right here is just a perfect example of my strategy. Now it is not a mechanical strategy, okay? That means that this is not gonna work every time it appears on the charts, okay? It, you must have some sort of narrative backing up this trade, right? What do I mean by narrative? Well, it must be following the overall draw on liquidity, right? You cannot just trade this in any direction. So. I must have something telling me that I think the market is going to go lower and the market must have a reason to go lower. So for example, in this case, let's say that we had a large higher time frame inefficiency that the market had not rebalanced to yet down here. And I'm going to use that as my shorter term draw on liquidity, right? Now, when the market starts trending down like this, what will we typically create here, here and here? Well, that will typically be imbalances, right? And it's actually very simple what it is that I look for. And it's basically a high inside of an imbalance that failed to fill the imbalance, right? Because what does price want to do? It wants to rebalance towards inefficiencies or hunt liquidity. So I'm kind of using those two concepts together because we, we have a we have a high, which is buy side liquidity, and we have an inefficiency that, that the market has not filled yet, right? So the first high that hit this imbalance did not fill this imbalance, right? So the market is not entirely done with this imbalance because these imbalances are here to get filled, right? So because this high failed to fill the imbalance, AKA it didn't do uh, its job, I am waiting for a new high to take out the prior high and, do th and finish the job that this high failed to finish, right? That's essentially what it is. So again, let's say we had an imbalance here right? So we have an imbalance here with a high. We have an imbalance here with a high. How do I know that the market is going to rebalance towards this high and then go lower or this high? Well, to be honest, I do not know, right? If I knew I would have an infinite amount of money. So I do not know, but I will rather stay on the safe side of things than try to hope or pray that this high is the one it's going to reverse off of. So one way to tell whether the market is going to reverse here or here is by utilizing the ICT optimal trade entry, right? So as you can see, these are both inside of optimal trade entry. So technically I would be allowed in terms of my rules to use both this high and this high. The only rule that I have with optimal trade entry turtle soup trades is that my stop must include all three zones. And preferably my stop has to go to the high that I draw the Fibonacci extension tool from, right? And as you can see, had I entered here with a stop at the high, it would have still worked. And that's the safest option when there's two highs. But let's say this high was down here, right? Let's say the high was here. Now I would know that I'm probably going to have to trade this and not this because this high is the only of the two, which is inside optimal trade entry. Now, is it necessary or do I only take trades that are inside of optimal trade entry? No, I don't. But if there are two highs and I'm confused uh, on which one to take, I will either not place the trade or I will take the high that is inside optimal trade entry. And that is essentially what I use the optimal trade entry for, right? And so in this scenario, this high would be the high that we would turtle soup. Now you can, the market will typically offer you three entries for a for a turtle soup trades like this. And the first entry 
is going to be the high, right? That is the most obvious entry. It is the most safest entry to make sure that you don't get left behind. Um, so that's the first option here. The second option is if the first high failed to hit the conscious main encroachment or the 50% the level of the imbalance, that right there can be your next uh, entry, right? And, and, and the last one is at the gap fill. So right there. Now, obviously, this one is a bit more risky in terms of you're, you're probably going to get left behind or there's a higher probability of this trade running without you. So it all depends on your stop loss, right? If you are not comfortable with the stop loss that the first entry is going to give you, well, then place your entry at the constant encroachment of the imbalance. If you're still not comfortable with your stop, then place it at the gap fill. So three possible entries here. If the high has not hit the constant encroachment, if the high has hit the constant encroachment, that now is two possible entries, right? Because there's no constant encroachment anymore. So it's either the high or the gap fill. And again, it all depends on your stop loss and where you are most comfortable placing your stop loss. Same exact scenario here if we wanted to turtle soup a low. So it's not only highs, it's also lows. I'm just giving you an example of a high. And I'm about to jump on to actual price action and show you this strategy in real time and how I caught or knew the longer term draw liquidity for the DXY only utilizing this single concept. So here we are on the DXY and this right here is a perfect, perfect example of the strategy that I just explained. It happened many times on the DXY recently on the four hour chart here. And the first one was right here, right? We have the first high right there of this four hour imbalance, right? The market comes down, but then it comes back up, sweeps the high and then gets the dump, right? So I guarantee you that a lot of traders, if they were able to trade the DXY, went short here. When the market came down here, they put their stops to break even, the market comes back up, stops them out break even, and then rallies lower. But after watching this video, you now know that the market is likely going to return to this high, fill a little bit more of this imbalance before running lower. And as you can see, that is exactly what happened here. So where do we place our stop? Well, I have one golden rule when it comes to entering on larger imbalances like this one, and that is your stop loss must always go above the conscious encroachment of that imbalance, right? And that is this middle point here. So my stomp has to go above the constant encroachment. And, and if I'm not comfortable with the stop that that is going to give me, I simply can't take the trade. But the safest option here is to put my stop at the high and allow the market to fill the imbalance if that is what it wants to do. Because that is essentially the idea behind it, that this high came and rebalanced what this high failed to rebalance. Now it didn't rebalance the entire gap. It's not going to happen all the time, but I do want to include it in my stop loss to make sure that I, that if the market wants to fill that imbalance, it has the option to do so without stopping me out. Right. And if I'm not comfortable doing that, then I simply just don't place the trade, but generally place your stop loss above the conscious main encroachment and you'll be fine. So that was the first example of this strategy right here. Now, right here, again, you see the exact same scenario playing out right? We have a four hour imbalance here. We have the first high created right there. And then we have the new high created right here. And that right there is again, your turtle soup. This high did in fact fill this entire imbalance, right? So this is a perfect example of the strategy that I use. So a lot of people shorted here. I guarantee it, right? A lot of people went short here. All the supply and demand traders probably shorted here. We have a four hour or even larger time frame order block right here that overlaps with this imbalance. And I guarantee you a lot of people shorted here. Now, when the market comes down this low, all these people have moved their stop losses to break even. New high is being made, fills the entire imbalance, stops out all the traders that shorted here, and then gives us the real move that took out sell side liquidity down here. Now, we see it happen all the time. In fact, we see it happen again right here. First high being made is right here. Market comes down a little bit, comes back up, sweeps the first high and then rallies lower, right? So that again is a perfect example of the turtle soup strategy. Now this right here is on a four hour time frame. So if I am not 
a person who trades a four hour time frame, which I am not personally, I can utilize this exact same concept on the lower time frame. However, I personally trade a one to five minute time frame. And if I'm using a one to five minute time frame, ideally, I want the gaps that I'm using and the highs that I'm using to be formed on a 15 minute time frame or above. So I will typically personally use the four hour time frame, the one hour time frame, and the 15 minute time frame to identify my entries on the one to five minute time frame. Now, right here is a great example on Euro USD of my strategy playing out. So we have a 15 minute imbalance right here, and we have just created a high inside of this 15 minute imbalance. So what I'm gonna do now is wait for this to become a swing high, and we'll see if that becomes a swing high. It indeed does. This right here is now swing high that failed to fill this entire imbalance. We have bearish displacement right here. And what I'm looking for now is a sweep of this high, and then I'm inside a trade. I'll go to a lower time frame, and I'll look for the high, which is right here. I'll wait for that high to get swept. Either my entry can be here, here, or the gap fill. We're going to go with the cosmic encroachment of this trade. We're going to keep quite a tight stop on it and go for the previous low right there. We're now going to play out the trade and see what happens. And as you can see, we made more equal highs before eventually taking out the high that we made and rallying down lower, right? So again, looking at it on a 15 minute chart, you can see clearly that we made a high inside of a 15 minute imbalance that failed to fill the imbalance. New high comes, fills the entire imbalance, and then rallies lower, right? And that is essentially the trading strategy in a nutshell. Right. That is that is what I've done to make a lot of money. And that is what I do every single day. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it cleared up some confusion around the turtle soup trades that you probably see a lot of people do on Twitter. It can be a very, very hard strategy to use because there are so many highs and there are so many lows. So being able to pick apart the good ones from the bad ones is just key when it comes to turtle soups. The reason why I decided to trade turtle soups over anything else is because I am able to get such good entries with these turtle soups. Does this mean that this strategy is going to work all the time and you're just going to go out there and make a bunch of money now? No, absolutely not. But it is a well back tested strategy that I personally know have an edge over the market. Now, will you have to use this strategy over and over again for it to have an edge for you? Absolutely. But I gave you the foundation of this strategy. And that is essentially all I can do. All the work that's left to do is for you to do. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.